So hello everyone. My name is Chata Yilmaz and I'm the innovation manager of Lander Rack Cabinet. Today uh, we will present EcoCube's building integration model for edge computing systems with my colleague Ender Demirel. Uh, First of all, for starters, uh, for the one who, who funds who doesn't know, uh, EcoCube is an EU-funded project which aims to enhance edge computing systems' energy efficiency uh, by integrating an artificial intelligence augmented management system, a holistic management system, uh, to our edge nodes. So in our program today, we will briefly give you some, some information about EcoCube project. We're going to brainstorm and discuss about the challenges of edge computing. Uh, we are going to think about possible ways of integrating uh, edge nodes into the buildings and microgrids, if possible. And we're going to share some uh, outcomes, and we're going to share the lessons that we learned. So. As mentioned, EcoCube is funded by European Commission and uh, it's been implemented by 11 partners all across the Europe. And I think it's representing a good sign because if you are going to north, everything is getting simple, especially about cooling. But are, if you are dealing with data centers all across the Europe and the world, then it's getting more challenging. But from my personal view, uh, besides the external temperatures, one of the biggest challenge in front of edge computing is the end user cases. Because if you go to hyperscalers, you usually deal with some experts who, who are ex expertized in, in, in cooling, in power electronics, in, in the virtualization layer of the data centers. But if you go to edge, you usually just work with smaller teams which has limited capabilities. So this, is, this was one of the first things which came to our mind to, to propose an artificial intelligence man management system, a more automized management system for edge, edge data centers. So what we found, uh, to be honest, four years ago I started working in Lande. I've never seen a server or, or a data center before. I'm originally graduated from physics, but the first thing came to my mind, we are not really listening to the data centers. Like, yes, we listen, we, we just got some readings from some props, but if you, if you take a deeper look at how data centers are working, especially the individual subsystems like the cooling system, IT system, and power, uh, they all act individually, and you are not basically bringing them, them together. Just an example, cooling system, you just get some readings from the thermal props, and it doesn't care what's really happening in the data center, so it, it really trusts some some thermal props. And there is limited holistic approach in the market, like the software layer. We all discussed about it during the event. Usually software and hardware side, there are totally different words. And we are, I think, not so sufficiently successful enough to bring these two words together. And uh, another a personal opinion, most of these technologies, they are developed for hyperscale systems. So, Consequently, we are going to the end users. The loads are randomly distributed. Uh, we are not basically checking what is happening on the servers, if they are running in an efficient way or not. Or the cooling, the, if, if we are providing adequate amount of cooling on the systems. So what we thought, we thought, let's listen to active IT components. Let's listen to them, but not only trace them with uh, some KPIs that I don't trust that much like PUE, but we have to actually track them with different metrics such as energy reuse factor, re renewable energy factor, primary energy savings, carbon savings, and one of my favorites, uh, work per unit of energy. We believe if we get the data from the active components and if we track this data, this big data, and if we interpret it, uh, with the support of these KPIs, uh, then we are having a better understanding of what is happening in the data centers. So to be able to make it, we uh, developed an uh, EDA, we say, environmental data en engine, which is safely bringing together the IT infrastructure and the data center. So with, with the support of this system, and we're going to make it open source when we finalize it, uh, you will be able to trace the, the, the KPIs that we are uh, following in EcoCube project. And once again, 
it is an ongoing project. Once we finalize it, uh, the system automatically itself will be sending the workloads to the right location with the right amount of utilization and the right amount of cooling and power. Uh, and another request, it was from the European Union. Uh, they specifically wanted us to make H units more integrated to the building and district's energy, energy systems. So by achieving so, we can minimize the utility dependency on the utility grid. We can integrate the data center into the renewable energy grids and hopefully at the end we will work fully with the uh, battery system, the UPS system of the building, which is going to, uh, I think, reduce the usage of the individual UPSs for micro H data centers. And with this integration, you are relying on the, the coolant system of the building, which is more efficient, and basically you can directly send the waste to the building because all the system is integrated within a frame. And up. so, we did it, we did it in Switzerland. Uh, in Switzerland, we have our partner, EMPA. And EMPA is an ideal microgrid to try uh, such an integration. And we have taken a refurbished uh, ORV2 rack, H node. And I would like to thank the Open uh, OEM for this, for their support. And we kind of combine it with a state-of-the-art cooling and containment system. And this system is not working flawlessly, totally integrated to the building's en oops, energy systems that you can see here. And it brings us, it, it brought us a lot of problems. It is really not easy. Whatever we discuss here, uh, I mean, in the last two days, we always discussed about developing some products from scratch, right? It's really easy. You design it and you implement it. But if you integrate a data center to an existing building, everything differs. There are so many variables, the, t the water uh, temperatures, regimes, and so on. So we integrated that, I don't know if you can read it, but in the middle there is a data center layer. It was totally new, and this was the challenge that we tried to solve. And we also tried to address it with the standards that we, uh, we already followed, but hopefully at the end of the project, we're gonna provide the end user some guidelines Whoever wants to integrate some data centers into, into some microgrids or buildings or districts, hopefully our guidelines are going to uh, give us some less challenging times rather than us. I uh, want to give you an example. Uh, we always talk about resilience, and once you want to integrate a data center into a building, then you are uh, basically carrying the same risk that the building is also heaven. So the water regime that on the top side you can see can change due to any failure. So you have to kind of integrate your risk management systems and include the risks that you are getting from the building as well. As you can see, once we had a failure in the chiller system of the building or downside, you can see in parallel the inlet temperatures of the, uh, of the uh, servers rise drastically. So we had to develop some extra security systems, some uh, alarm systems to, to prevent some incidents. So this is also something which will go to our guidelines at the end of, at the, end of the project, uh, that we have to care about resilience and we have to be a bit more uh, careful about uh, raising awareness in the market, but not only IT market, but all, also the building and district developer, the, uh, developers, engineers, and architects as well. They have to know what we need. So for these pages, in this, in this uh, EMPA facility, we also implement a state-of-the-art zonal cooling cops concept. So Professor Ender will be giving some information about this novel approach. Uh, I will mention about the uh, thermal structure inside the data centers because we have three pilot sites. So we have to prove the technology on these uh, sites. Uh, you are seeing the uh, three-dimensional geometry of Bitnet data center, which is located in Istanbul. So we, are, uh, develop, we, ha we have developed an open source CFD model uh, for the simulation of thermal structure inside the data center because CFD techniques can reveal the internal flow structures and we can capture 
uh, adverse effects in order to increase the cooling efficiency of the data centers. So uh, based on our numerical simulations, we have seen that the data center is suffering from low uh, cooling efficiency. So we have retrofitted the data center uh, by locating some panels uh, in order to isolate uh, cold and hot ales. So the efficiency of the data center has been increased by uh, about 40% uh, based on different uh, efficiency metrics. So we believe that the cooling system should be sensitive to the thermal structure inside the data center because everything is heterogeneous because of the uh, buoyance and turbulence effects. So in order to uh, mitigate or eliminate hot points inside the data center, the cooling system should be modified uh, to this. So one of the scientific and technical objectives uh, of EcoCube project is the development of a zonal cooling concept, uh, which, is, uh, which focuses on the zones or creating zones inside the data center. So uh, the main idea behind this uh, algorithm is to control the fans of the uh, cooling system. So uh, as Chata mentioned, the EMPA data center, the cooling system of the EMPA data center is originally uh, designed by this approach. Uh, so in order to uh, develop the zonal cooling concept, uh, we had to develop a fan-driven uh, data center model. Uh, what I mean uh, on fan-driven data center model, the most common approach in, uh, in the literature uh, for the prediction of the flow rate passing through the servers uh, is to fix the flow rate depending on the power consumptions. Uh, this approach can be applicable uh, for big data centers, but if, the, if we consider the micro data center, uh, the flow inside the micro data center is uh, driven by the fans of the servers and the cooling system. So the numerical model should consider the fan speeds of the servers and uh, cooling system. Uh, in order to apply this uh, on EMPA site, which is a micro data center for us, uh, we had to develop some fan driven boundary conditions and incorporated those boundary conditions into the open source numerical model. Uh, because using open source uh, libraries can allow us uh, to incorporate new techniques or new boundary conditions. So uh, at the end of the day, we can control the fans of the uh, servers and fans of the cooling systems uh, to drive the flow from the cold and hot ales. The, we believe that the pressure difference between cold and hot ales are the uh, main role uh, for the cooling system. So uh, due to the time limit, uh, I, I, the, that's all my, uh, okay, thank, thank you. you sir. Uh, do you want to say something here? Yeah, I want to f say a, a few uh, things here. Uh, the second challenge uh, in the CFT modeling of the servers uh, was the prediction of the pressure drop uh, occurred inside the uh, server components because the flow uh, experiences a significant uh, pressure drop and energy losses while passing through the server. So we had to develop a fast and accurate uh, approach uh, for the prediction of the pressure drop. So uh, you can uh, follow our paper published in Energy as Journal. So I want to mention that a lot. Thank, Thank you. you. So another pilot that we actually added later on, uh, this block heating. And block heating is another pilot data center of EcoCube project, which is benefit benefiting the flexibility of open, open uh, compute systems. And uh, they basically rely on uh, exchanging their waste heat to, to agriculture uh, market. So they have a really innovation driven, low carbon business model. And in this business model, uh, we are using directly chip cooling with cold plate technology. So it is giving us a great advantage of uh, recapturing a more amount of uh, waste heat. And we th this first chart is uh, actually representing our, one of our tests with the low IT load, as you can see in the, uh, in the chart here, our return temperatures can actually reach up to 40 degrees, which is not so uh, 
satisfying for most of the market, but uh, this is also giving us an, an hinge of like finding the right place and right business model to, to trade your waste heat. So this, in this stage, uh, we were successful. And it is also giving us other resilience metrics and risk metrics because uh, such systems are quite dependent on the inlet and outlet temperatures. I don't have them. If you want to discuss about it, we can discuss later. And this is the medium IT load test that we actually start exceeding 50 temperatures. And when, once we perform the high load test, then we will be able to hopefully reach an even higher temperatures, which are more meaningful for the market. So this is, this is the general presentation. I would like to close the presentation with the call to action. Please uh, just check our web page uh, to find out the adva advancements of EcoQ project. You can register our newspaper, and uh, I would suggest following the EU Code of Conduct data centers energy efficiency because it helped us a lot with the development of this project. So thank you for listening. Hi, um, uh, great work, thanks for presenting this. Uh, do you see any uh, shift in the regulatory environment in Europe or elsewhere that, that you know, was that mo a motivator for your work or is the regulatory environment relatively static or can you make predictions about how it might change that might affect us? Uh, if I remember the numbers, like in the EU, like the, the uh, power consumption, consumption of the H units are skyrocketing. So EU is kind of sensitive about H computing. That's why they uh, opened this call. And if I'm not mistaken, they predict in a few years up to 12, 13 percent of the energy consumption. So they kind of uh, pushing us like they already with the EU Green Deal, they already put, set some limits uh, to make this market in a, uh, carbon net by 2030. Uh, but I think with, with these predictions and with, with this uh, less efficient infrastructure, I assume that they are going to be a bit more strict about H units uh, and there will be more calls and more uh, like effort is going to be directed to this way, like the smaller data centers and its ener their energy efficiency. I hope it answered a bit. <laughs> so thank you again. <laughs> Sorry.